consolidation model. Let's look at the components of a consolidation model. It has everything in a typical three statement financial model, meaning assumptions and each of the three statements. It has everything in a DCF model as well, meaning the calculation of free cash flow and net present value. And then it has assumptions from multiple business units. So instead of just one operating company or one operating unit, we have a tab for each of them separately. They are full-blown models for each of the businesses. Then what we do is consolidate all of them into one business. Let's look at the purpose of a consolidation model. It's usually for internal budgeting and planning purposes. With larger companies that own multiple subsidiary businesses or different business units, they need it for detailed reporting. It's also used in corporate development for M&A. It's also used in valuation purposes by investment bankers and equity research professionals. If you want to learn how to build this model from scratch, you can take any of these three courses, particularly the M&A modeling course. Let's jump into the model now and look at it in detail. Here we are inside the consolidation model. On the cover page, we have links to each of the business units, corporate overhead, and the consolidated model. Let's start by clicking through to business unit number one. In business unit number one, we have a typical financial model. It has assumptions and drivers, then the three financial statements, any supporting schedules, a DCF model, and sensitivity analysis. So this business unit can be evaluated entirely on its own. When we open it up, we see a typical CFI style of financial model with a nicely linked set of statements and DCF. Then we have business unit number two. It's structured in exactly the same way. And business unit number three. Then there's corporate overhead. In this section, all we have are the expenses that are borne by corporate overhead or adjustments that need to be made to any of the business units. If there are costs that can't easily be allocated to the business units themselves, it may make sense to have this separate overhead tab. And then finally, there's the consolidation tab. In the consolidation tab, let's open it up. We don't have any operating scenarios because this is the sum of individual businesses and each of them have their own operating scenarios. But then what you'll see is a green colored formula. The reason it's green is because it's linking to other worksheets. And if you look at the formula, the revenue line here is the sum of the revenue in each of the business units and any adjustments from corporate overhead. So we have the income statement, balance sheet, cash flow, etc., and then the DCF model below that. And in the DCF model, we actually have a breakdown of the consolidated business by business unit and then the negative impact of corporate overhead expenses or other adjustments. So as you can see, this type of a model makes it very easy to see the consolidated view of an entire business, as we see here, but then drill in deeper to each of the individual business units, see their operating scenarios, and how they all add up to the consolidated total. Let's look at a quick example of, conceptually speaking, how to add another business unit to this model. Imagine that the company is going to undergo an acquisition. What we would do is take one of the existing business units, say business unit number three, right click and select move or copy. Once you select move or copy, you're gonna tick this box here that says create a copy and we're gonna put it right before the corporate overhead. So it says here before sheet and we want it before corporate overhead. Let's press okay. And then we see that it's copied over. Let's change that to business unit number four. Once we've done that, we would change all of the numbers, of course, since it's a different business. We would change all of the assumptions, change all of the, the revenue numbers, etc. And then we would go to the consolidated tab and we would just have to update all of these green formulas. So it may seem like a lot of updates to make, but since the structure is identical, assuming we've left it as identical, then all we have to do is here, add a plus, and let's go to, this is the revenue in 2013, business unit four, 
the revenue in 2013 and press enter. Now that formula can be copied all the way across and it can be filled all the way down. And once you go through and fill it for all of the green cells, which won't be too hard, then you'll have completely updated the consolidated model to include this additional business unit. Now you may be wondering, what if the new company has different line items? It most likely will. Most companies have very different items on their income statement, balance sheet, etc. The key is to try to remap the financial statements so that they fit together. And in our M&A modeling course, we show you how to remap statements so that they can fit with other businesses. That's an entire exercise in itself. But just know that it is possible, and there is quite a bit of detail around how to do that. Check out the M&A modeling course to see how to do that and make sure that everything consolidates nicely together.